Like a lot of you, I've been spending a lot more time in my house since the pandemic started. This has provided me the opportunity to catch up on a bunch of reading that I've been meaning to do. In particular, I've been binge reading a lot of pop science, especially the classics by people like Carl Sagan. While rereading several of his classic books, the question dawned on me, what would Dr. Sagan make about the current outbreak and pandemic? While we can never know for certain because Dr. Sagan passed away in 96, I imagine, given how strong his opinions were on things like skepticism and science literacy, he'd have a bunch to tell us. For starters, I think he'd be appalled by the anti-vax movement that popped up in the decades following his death. While there have been anti-inoculation and anti-vaccine movements in the United States since the 1800s, they've never been quite as strong or as vocal or as well organized as they are right now. While the decades he lived were not exactly a golden age for critical thinking, and he was quite aware of the pseudoscience movements which have existed in the United States since colonial days, and in anti-science movements in the Soviet Union such as Lysenkoism, I think he'd be stunned by how something which seems so apolitical after all, who could be opposed to protecting the elderly and sickly in our society has become such a politically charged issue. At the moment of making this video, there is not currently a vaccine for COVID-19. When there is one, however, there are already many people that have committed to not getting one. Some of the loudest voices in this movement are the typical people who usually reject science. There are, however, people with political motives that just don't like government telling them what to do or simply view anything done by a corporation as evil off the bat, regardless of its consequences. To put it more bluntly, this is one of those rare issues in which there are people on both sides of the political spectrum which are legitimately wrong. This bipartisan failure should concern us. However, one thing that we could be optimistic about is that there are also grounds for bipartisan success and outreach. This is because there are also people on both sides of the fence that are right about vaccination. Dr. Sagan worked with people across the political spectrum to promote science. We can do something similar with vaccination and outreach. We can build bridges across the political aisle while protecting our fellow citizens. This seems to me to be quite obviously what Dr. Sagan would have done. Another topic that's related is how many people disregard recommendations by the Center for Disease Control and other medical professionals to minimize the impact of the COVID-19 outbreak. In my opinion, this would not surprise Dr. Sagan at all. In fact, during his lifetime, he ran into people who made similar protests but about a different topic. While he is sometimes whitewashed as being something of a Mr. Rogers who talked about space, Dr. Sagan was actually quite passionate about environmental issues and nuclear disarmament. Many of his books touch on these topics. His show, Cosmos, also had very deep environmental overtones, which are not that hard to spot. While we think of him as being very apolitical now, these stances put Carl Sagan as an adversary to many of the political talking heads and politicians of his day. While these instances may seem dissimilar than the people protesting about wearing masks, they actually share the same ideological underpinnings. The biggest one of these is that anything that could be remotely interpreted as encroaching on freedom, even with the best intentions and even if it's by just a teeny tiny bit, ought to be rejected out of hand as government encroachment. This type of thinking could be seen in his day with people who protested regulations to stop acid rain and ozone depletion. It can be seen now in people who protest wearing a face mask. It is important, however, to note that Dr. Sagan was someone who especially venerated the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. In the demon-haunted world, he marveled at this document's power, not just for the United States, but of all mankind and considered it a watershed moment in human history. Just like a good science education, Dr. Sagan considered a good education on civics to be essential. He was also very skeptical of state power and was very critical of things like the Vietnam War. He, however, did not view every government action as intrinsically evil. It just depended on what it was. Sometimes, for example, you simply have to pass the laws that take the lead out of gasoline, and that's just how it is. While I cannot be certain, I think he'd view wearing masks in a similar manner. While it may be unpleasant, I think Dr. Sagan would point out that we should listen to experts who understand what they're talking about, and do it to protect our fellow citizens. While I can never know for certain, this seems to be in line with the values that he regularly discussed in his books such as Pale Blue Dot. If you're someone who cares very deeply about the well-being of others, all of this may seem very depressing. There however is a glimmer of hope that I think Carl Sagan would be quite pleased and optimistic about. 
This is the growth of how many people are interested in popularizing science and critical thinking. There were certainly some wonderful popularizers of science in Carl Sagan's day, such as the late Stephen Jay Gould and Stephen Hawking, and there are actually already good skeptical organizations such as the Center for Skeptical Inquiry. Over the last couple of decades, however, we've seen a remarkable golden age in popularizing science. Where there was once just a few people, there are now dozens of capable writers in every single area of science imaginable writing excellent books for the public. The skeptical movement, which Carl Sagan helped found with people like Martin Gardner and James Randi, has, thanks in large part to the internet and popularizers of science like Sagan himself, grown rampantly since the mid-90s. While there is once a few organizations and some popular books, there are now podcasts, meetup groups, and local organizations all around the world. The members of these groups, which were inspired and cultivated by Carl Sagan himself, are the ones who are directly fighting misinformation and nonsense about COVID-19. These are both activists such as myself and professional scientists who went into their fields because of people like Carl Sagan. This, I think, would give him a lot of hope. With that said, I'm going to leave you with a quote from Carl Sagan's Cosmos because it seems highly pertinent to the current pandemic. What we do with our world right now will propagate down through the centuries and powerfully affect the destiny of our descendants. It is well within our power to destroy our civilization and perhaps our species as well. If we capitulate a superstition or greed or stupidity, we can plunge our world into a darkness deeper than the time between the collapse of classical civilization and the Italian Renaissance. But we are also capable of using our compassion, our intelligence, our technology, and our wealth to make an abundant and meaningful life for every inhabitant on Earth, to enhance enormously our understanding of the universe, and to carry us to the stars. If you enjoyed this episode, please like and subscribe below. And until next time, stay skeptical.